like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. a scroll and the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul Hallelujah. Well, good morning, and welcome to Crenshaw Christian Center. We are here to celebrate the life of our, my precious sister, Miss Shirley Bird, <laughs> my girl. Hallelujah. So we're going to move right along, and um, we're going to follow the order of our uh, programs here. So I say good morning. I'm Dr. Jones, Dr. Price Jones, and um, I am the sister of Apostle Price, the auntie of Dr. Price. Uh, and on behalf of our family, the ministry, we want to extend to you, William and Stacy, and the entire family, friends, our heartfelt condolences. And we just want to let you know that we are here to serve you this day. And as I always say, we are as close as your phone. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to start off here. We have our first scripture over in Psalms, number 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm echoing. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Looking at Matthew, number five, chapter number five in Matthew. Thank God for the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Starting off with, uh, I believe it's the first verse in, uh, well, 12. Yeah, math, I mean, chapter number five and starting off with verse number one, we'll go to 12. All right. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed 
are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who shall who were before you. Let's pray. Father, oh, hallelujah. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. And we know that based on your word, you are the God of all comfort and peace. I speak peace at everyone at the sound of my voice. Your peace now that passeth all understanding. So we thank you, Father, for even as you have said in your word, peace you give us, not as the world give. And let not our heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we thank you, Father, for your peace. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are welcome in this place. We continue to look to the hills from which comes our help, for we know that our help truly comes from you. So we give you all the praise and the glory. Satan and demons, I do remind you and I serve you notice that the forces of darkness and these issues are rendered null and void, non-effective and powerless. We loose now your power and your anointing that destroys every yoke and yokes are being destroyed now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you and all those who will agree will say amen. All right, now, ministry and song, my tribute, Dr. Harold Johnson. You may. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever I owe it all to Thee, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things He has done. For the things he has done, just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, O oh Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with his blood. things he has done to 
Thank you, Dr. Johnson. All right, now we will have acknowledgments. And that's Stacy Banks. And if you will move to my left here, your right, on the podium. Thank you guys for coming. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna have all you guys crying probably. <laughs> my brother William and I, we really appreciate you guys for showing. And whoever's online watching, thank you. Amen. Your support has been so appreciated. All the calls, the flowers, text messages, just the stories you told us about our mom, the things we didn't know. Like, I've always known her as my mom, but you know her as friend. And I've gotten to see a whole other side of her because of you. And I owe you all that, and I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. I also want to say thank you to every person that is that has known from the beginning when this really started in October that my mom called or that you just happened to call her and she told you what was going on and you dedicated yourself to pray for her. Every intercessor, every prayer team member here at Crenshaw Christian Center and Calvary Chapel Burbank, thank you so much. Thank you for just supporting us in prayer. I personally believe that's why she lasted with us as long as she did. I want to acknowledge the doctors that helped my mom as well. Um, Dr. Samuel Porter, thank you for catching it and knowing what was going on. Dr. Copen, we thank you for just your immediate action when we went in for the physical and you let us know that she was not going to be able to get her surgery that was scheduled and that we were gonna have to postpone and try some different treatment. I, your compassion and your kindness is unparalleled and there need to be more doctors like you. So thank you. Mm. Dr. Lee, we thank you for your humanity. Really every doctor, every nurse at Cedars has been exceptional during this time. Um, I've never seen doctors and nurses like this. So thank you so much for your humanity. Uh, I, thank you, I thank your team as well for treating my mom and always treating her like a human being, not like a number, not like just any other patient. We really felt like you cared about her. We really believe that you cared about her. Um, thank you for knowing when to call it quits as well. Um, thank you for considering my mom's best interests at all times and definitely during her last few days here. Thank you for acknowledging when she said no more needles. Thank you to every 
nurse that was there for her, especially the nurse that was there the last day. I've never experienced so much compassion from a person that just met me. And I see why they chose you for that day and that time. And thank you for those mocha cafes. They were delicious. <laughs> thank you to every friend and neighbor that knocked on our door and that's here right now. I see you three back there. And thank you for every former neighbor. And I see you that there too. And um, for all of you who are tuning in online that you remembered my mom and you just wanted to be here. Um, we appreciate every flower, every knock on our door. Absolutely. Thank you to the nurses, the staff, um, especially you, Jamie, at Country Villa Wilshire. You talked to me every time I came in and comforted me, gave me advice, gave us connections, um, resources, and uh, helped us almost get our mom home for her last day. Um, but the compassion and friendliness will never be forgotten. And thank you for the straight talk that we have. And please forgive me, the administrator at Country Villa Wilshire. Um, I keep forgetting your name. But you gave us, my brother and I, a really straight talk the last time that we came in together. And we needed that. We wanted that. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. So thank you for that. And Thank you all of you who are coworkers that are here and form or former coworkers that are here because and who are tuning in because um, I'm so amazed at how many of you stayed friends with my mom and it's so cool <laughs> and it's so beautiful and it's a testament to her always reaching out to people and wanting to be friends with everyone she ever met and thank you for reaching back to her and making her life richer because of it. Um, she loved you guys. She really did. She enjoyed her job. She loved what she did. And uh, she really looked forward to going to work. She took a lot of pride in her job. And I know you all know she, she liked to do a lot of things, um, travel, and she shared her life with you. She made you family. And um, so um, my one request to you, many of you have asked what you can do. And um, it will cost you not much. Yeah, I think you'll gain much more than it costs you. And my request is that you just keep her in mind and pay forward what she's done for you. Keep this world a good place. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Precious. Amen. Praise God. You did well. <laughs> All right. Now we'll have the reading of the obituary, and that's William Bird. Yes. Good morning. I had a hard time writing this obituary because I learned a lot about her that I did not know. And so this really reflects a lot of what you guys have told me. Jesse James Mallory of West Virginia was a father of young Jesse when he met Mary Lavinia Robinson's of North Carolina. The family settled down in Indianapolis, Indiana. Together they would have five children, the eldest was Shirley. Upon graduating high school, Shirley moved to California to attend UCLA. But she soon met James Byrd Sr. and a whirlwind romance ensued. They married a year later. Shirley eventually gave birth to, two, to three children, James Byrd Jr., William Byrd, and Stacy Banks. In the early 1970s, Shirley found her church home with Crenshaw Christian Center, and she remained a member until her death more than 50 years later. During the COVID pandemic, Shirley adopted Burbank Calvary Church as her church home away from home. She remained active with both churches until her death. 
she would attend in, per in person at Burbank Calvary Church, rush home to watch online the Crenshaw service. Shirley cultivated long, lifelong relationships easily. Even as her marriage ended, Shirley's bond with her in-laws remained strong. This affection helped to maintain the bond between James Byrd Sr. and his sons. Shirley also cultivated an equally strong relationship with the family of her daughter's father with similar results. And as each of these relatives, ex extended family, passed on, Shirley was there with them, visiting and praying with each of them. Shirley's natural pattern of selflessness and empathy cultivated caring relationships throughout her work life as well. Around 1980, Shirley was one of a few non-managers who was offered the opportunity to relocate to Nevada when her employer moved. Shirley stayed because the move to Nevada meant giving up her church home and her two extended families. Shirley cultivated strong, loving relationships with her next and final employer, the city of Beverly Hills. In the early 1980s, Shirley joined the Department of Building and Safety. At her job, Shirley was a model of kindness and patience with both her coworkers and the endless flow of frustrated permit applicants. <laughs> Faced with people who just wanted to point blame, she responded by pointing solutions. Shirley seemed to know everybody's birthday and just the right flower or plant to give. This kindness was returned a few times. In 2001, Shirley's eldest son, James Byrd Jr., died. Even though it was a work day, half the people in attendance were her co-workers. We will never forget that, by the way. Thirteen years later, her retirement dinner attendance overflowed the venue. In retirement, Shirley was an active member in her condominium community. She was, a constant, she was constantly flowering a plant, checking on a suspected leak, or otherwise making the community more beautiful. Naturally, she was asked to lead the Homeowners Association. <laughs> Shirley also loved to travel. She loved cruise ships especially. And she had a proud uh, collection of photographs taken with the, cap with the captains of each of these ships. Amongst her, her dream trips, Shirley visited Hawaii, she walked through Jerusalem, and she attended the Passion Play in Obermagu, Germany. Yes, I tortured that name. <laughs> During and after the COVID showdown, and as her health began to slowly decline, Shirley attended Crenshaw Christian Center less and less in person, but continued to regularly attend by phone or online. As her comfort in driving less distances as her comfort in driving long distances faded, Shirley began to attend in-person services at the Burbank Calvary Church. In late 2023, Shirley began to experience some unusual health symptoms. After consulting with multiple physicians, she was diagnosed with an extremely rare and aggressive form of cancer and a couple other health conditions which complicated the treating of the tumor. The cancerous tumor grew at an incredibly fast rate and it didn't respond to any of the chemotherapy. <clears throat> Having lived a long, faithful, and meaningful life, during her last day, she simply said, it's okay, I'm ready. With her son and daughter present, she passed away peacefully in her sleep. Shirley was preceded in death by her parents, a sister, Jessie, a brother, Yuri, a son, James Jr., and countless friends who considered her part of their families. Shirley is survived by her sister, Betty, her brothers, Larry and Barry, her son, William, her daughter, Stacy, cousins, nieces, and a host of, of friends and neighbors that she considered as part of her extended family.
Amen. Thank you, precious. Praise the Lord. And now we'll prepare to have reflection of memories. And uh, usually it is about up to five individuals. And um, I'm going to ask for forgiveness in advance with uh, the pronouncing of names. So if you will move to my left and your right, the first one that is uh, listed here, that's Claire. And uh, I don't know if that's Benzel Yang. And then Liz Blackman. Phoebe Henderson, Betty Mallory, and Mark Scott. So the first individual, yes, Claire, you can go right up. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for a life well lived. Amen. Surely he had been my... I met her when I became a neighbor in our condominium complex. And I was so excited because I'm a true believer. She's a believer. We spent many hours together just talking about the goodness of the Lord. Many hours. And always joyous. She was kind to everybody. <laughs> everybody knew her. And she was always diligent in her work. She... Um, I'd sometimes leave the building at 5.30 in the morning, and she was out there working on the building, <laughs> making sure we had a peaceful, uh, well-organized, and um, a place to live. She did everything decent and in order. She was a true, virtuous woman of God. Amen. And we're honored to have known her. We got to share time with her. And I'm not sad because I'm celebrating her life. Yes. A life well lived. Um, she, uh, she would uh, come with me to church on occasion too. She loved going to church and she loved Crenshaw Christian Center. That's I give good. honor to uh, Pastor Frederick Price and his son Fred Price Jr., who's now um, pastor. Pastor. Yes. Um, they, they, they're really a teaching. They teach you about the Lord here. But mm -hmm. Shirley loved her church. Amen. She loved it. She talked about it all the time. We and loved her. <laughs> like you said, she wouldn't miss a service. She'd watch it streaming after the pandemic. <laughs> but um, I have many fond memories with her. She, um, she spent a one Christmas with myself and my family. And, you know, we'd get together and it started at one, but we were having such a good time. We stayed together till 10 o'clock <laughs> um, and, and lots of good moments were shared with her. Um, I think I shared every part of my life with her, bearing my testimony to her because she made you feel comfortable. Amen. I could just open up and talk to her. Yes. And... In the building where I live, I'm grateful that she went about the business of keeping our building a nice place. And sometimes when I look at the Beatitudes from Matthew, <laughs> um, and I see, blessed are the peacemakers, yes. for they shall be called the children of God. Yes. She was a peacemaker. Amen. And I can say... Um, Actively, in an occasion, something that I had <laughs> going on, she was, uh, she's just as calm. Um, she kept a philosophical calm about her in every situation. Praise but God. I will always hold on to her laughter. Um, it, it's just boisterous. She, I just loved hearing that laughter. <laughs> and when I look at her children, William... And Stacy, I, mm -hmm. I see parts of you in her. Mm -hmm. I see the business side of her and William. I see the caring and kindness in Stacy. So she's not totally gone. And uh, I know Paul said to be absent from this body is rather to be present with the Lord. 
Amen. Well, she got to see the Lord, and he's saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. So I, I know we can all take comfort in knowing she had a strong relationship with the Lord. She left us the best gift of all, her, her relationship with the Lord. We don't have to guess where she is. We Amen. know where she is. And we're celebrating. Yes. And uh, she didn't just go up there in a T-shirt. She's wearing fine robes. <laughs> she's got a crown of jewels on her head because it says do not store your treasure on earth where yes. moth and dust corrupts it but rather store it in heaven yes. where um, where she is now receiving her glory and yes. and I feel good about that yes we'll miss her yes. but we know where she's at and you know, for one day we'll be joined again. That's a promise that we will be together with her in the clouds forevermore. Amen. And we're to comfort one another with these words. That's it. So I wish you all um, well. And, and we were all blessed and honored for having known her. And we'll see her again. Amen. <laughs> At his appointed time. Hallelujah. God bless. All right. Thank you, my love. <laughs> Amen. Oh, precious, precious memories. <clears throat> I was lucky enough to know and love Shirley Bird because my mom was lucky enough to know and love her first. My mom was a famous, award-winning, architectural interior designer based in Beverly Hills in her heyday and could be quite the force to be reckoned with. <laughs> but make no mistake about it, when it came to getting any project started, much less completed in Beverly Hills, she knew who was boss and who to make friends with. <laughs> and that was Shirley Bird. <laughs> when Shirley retired in 2014, an outside observer may have imagined that would be the end of that convenient friendship. But that was so not so. <laughs> the truth is, Shirley Bird was one of my mom's and my most authentic, steadfast, and beloved friends. Whether it was in person, Every time my mom was honored or feted, Shirley was always at the top of the guest list. Whether it was in person, excuse me, whether it was by mail with beautiful cards and messages to mark every happy occasion, or whether it was by phone just to check in, mm -hmm. Shirley remembered the things that were important to you because they were important to her too. Shirley simply always showed up, literally and figuratively, for the best of times and when needed most during the worst of times. Mm -hmm. When my mom was in and out of the hospital multiple times over the past several years, facing daunting, even life-threatening challenges, I would reach out to Shirley. And her first question would be, how's our favorite mom? When I'd tell her mom could use some extra help right now, Shirley would reply, I will keep up the prayers and alert the prayer team. God. Yes. And I just knew she was calling in the troops, her A-team. <laughs> I imagine many of you are here today, and with a grateful heart, I thank all of you. Every time I, my mom would beat the odds, I fully believed Shirley had something to do with what seemed could only be described as a miraculous recovery. There was something so authentic about Shirley's faith. When she told you she was keeping you in her prayers, you believed her. And not just some passing prayers. I mean heartfelt, this is a priority prayers. I always had the feeling that Shirley truly listened for the answer when she asked how we were doing. She made it her business 
and she made it her mission to do everything within her power to help. Our Shirley Bird was a rare bird, <laughs> indeed. And she will be sorely missed, and she will be remembered always with love and with gratitude. Amen. Thank you, my love. Praise the Lord. Okay, all right. Betty, were you going to come? Okay, you can come. Oh, is she here, Phoebe? Hello. Um, my name is Mark Scott. Um, I was told I had two minutes to do this, and I fell for it. So um, I actually wrote it out so that I could discipline myself to live within two minutes. But now I've learned that I can have a little bit of poetic license. Um, I was city manager in Beverly Hills for, for most of the years that Shirley worked there. And um, on paper, I was her boss. Um, but in fact, Shirley managed me up, um, if you know what I mean. Um, I saw early on all the things that you've been hearing from other people, um, that Shirley treated the public with extraordinary respect and energy, problem solver, cared about people. I mean, surely cared about people. Um, but even more than that, surely also cared about all those people she worked with, several of whom are here today as tribute to that. Um, she cared about people. She looked after us. Um, she advocated for us. Um, she was just really extraordinary. Um, she was my teacher, my coach, and my friend. Um, in fact, three of the last five city managers of Beverly Hills started off working with the building and safety department, one of whom is here. And two of them are here. And, um, and we can tell you that Shirley coached us all very well. <laughs> just as an example, I would come in in the morning and Shirley would, would say, kind sir. Um, that's how she liked to address me. Um, she would say, um, how are you? And I'd say, oh, I'm doing well. And she'd say, well, I'm doing great. But you know, Joe, Joe's having a rough time. And uh, we're all trying to lift his morale a little bit. And she wouldn't tell me what I needed to do. But it was pretty clear. I was supposed to go by and say something to Joe, right? <laughs> so the day would go by, and at the end of the day, Shirley would come by my office, and she'd say, I don't know what you said to Joe, but it sure made a difference. It really made him feel better. We're so lucky to have a boss like you. She really knew how to work me. <laughs> and and to the benefit of everyone, and especially me. Um, Shirley was a very, very special person. Um, Shirley taught me that everyone in the organization matters. But more than that, everyone in the organization matters as much as everyone else in the organization. That was Shirley's ethic. That was what she believed in, and it's so true. Um, I give her a lot of credit for, for the career I've had. I left Beverly Hills in 2003 
but Shirley has always stayed very much in touch. The same theme that you're hearing from everyone, she stayed in touch. I bet I'd get four or five greeting cards a year on every major holiday, um, Christmas, Easter, um, Memorial Day, when I was city manager of Burbank, she would come to our programs on Memorial Day. Um, she'd come by City Hall to see me, the emails. Um, it's extraordinary. And they'd have that unique signature. You know the signature? The one that looks like the pen dried up and you have to go like this to get it to write again? Um, so I look forward to those so much. Um, she didn't tell me she was sick. Uh, the last email I got from her was in no on November 30th, and she apologized for missing Thanksgiving. Um, and she told me about the 50-year anniversary of her church and how sorry she was that Apostle Fred Price had not been there to see it. Um, she was always thinking about her church friends and, 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 and the world. I mean, she was so considerate all the time. Um, and she networked with all of our employees. Um, I don't know what we're going to do, y'all, now that we don't have her to, to keep us all connected. So one of you is going to have to take that. Um, city manager, you know. Um, in short, Shirley has lived the most Christ-like life of anyone I know. Um, as the song says, just a closer walk with thee, grant it Jesus is my plea. Shirley walks with Jesus today, and heaven has another angel. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. Would the, uh, her employees, her other workers, would you all stand? Oh, that's precious, amen. To God be the glory. We so appreciate you being here today because it is a celebration of Shirley's life. Definitely so. All right, Betty. Yes. Thank you. First of all, I just want to give honor to Jesus Christ, the head of my life. Amen. To all of the honorees here, Dr. Joan. Dr. Harold Johnson, amen. And to the first of all, the late pastor and I believe founder of this center, Dr. Fred Price, and to the pastor currently now, Dr. Fred Price the Jr., and to the first ladies, the Prices, and all of the, sim uh, the members of the center here, I praise God, first of all, for just being here. I, uh, I guess it just took me as a surprise about my sister's um, sickness and illness. But she played a very important part in my life as well as my sister and as a friend. First of all, she first uh, would get on the prayer lines from Indianapolis. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm Evangelist Betty, and Mallory's on here, but that's my maiden name. Whitfield is my last name. And I have a friend that, that was a friend of Shirley's that came here. Her name is Diane Woodruff. It's with me. We traveled here from Indianapolis. But I just wanted to say that she really stuck close to me on the phone, different occasions and different events that we would have. She would come home on holidays and so forth like that. And William... And Stacy are just like, they were just like my own children. They, they would call me. They would come around. They would, um, in, in, in the holiday one year, William came home one Christmas, I believe it was. And Stacy, she would come in town um, from time to time and be with me and so forth like that. And my pastor who I am up under now from Refuse Temple Revival Center, and his first lady, um, sister, we call her Mother Otis, was overseer Mother Otis, Margaret Otis, and to that assembly there that I am pre presently with now, and also my former church, Bethel Tabernacle, 
uh, assembly. Shirley was a part of that. That was like one of her extended churches. She fellowshiped with me with, on the prayer line with, uh, and was right after the pandemic. And she would be a part of that. And the pastor in the first, under the first lady and pastor there under the leadership of uh, District Elder Alfred Amos and First Lady Mary Amos and how that she would be a part of pr the prayer. They would say, would you do the prayer today? Or they would say, would you come and maybe read a scripture and so forth? Like, and she'd text me and say, I'm going to be on the line today. I just want to let you know. Sometimes we would hook up together like that. But I just wanted to say that I am so thankful to see all of those that she worked with and showed up, those that are here to support her, that means that she, 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 she meant something on the job and she meant something to you for an impression that she showed you and your love that you showed her here. And I want to also give honor to all of the honorees that's in Indianapolis, Indiana, that might be even uh, watching or seeing what they uh, were able to come in on on this part today as well. But I know I don't have very much longer to be up here, but I just want to say that Shirley was like very outgoing. I mean, she loved, most of us already been said. She loved traveling. She loved going places. She loved shopping. And she loved uh, actually doing things that made you feel like, you know, oh, I got to catch up with her. She's so far ahead of me, and she'd just go ahead on and do things. And if you didn't catch up with it, she'd leave you and go on with it and say, well, you were too late. So I, I've already done that, you know. But she was very very spiritual-minded, very spiritual-minded. She loved Crenshaw Christian Center as the body. She loved you. And she loved talking about Jesus. She loved the word of God. And many times she would say, well, what are you going to do today? Or what's, what's your plans? And I would tell her what my plans were and so forth. She said, well, amen. Well, praise God. You know, things like the hallelujah. But I miss her. I really, really miss her. I just want to say even to my children that could not be here, my brothers that are not here, my children that couldn't make it today, my son-in-law, they wanted to be here, and they all send their condolences, many friends from Indianapolis, many ones that sent their condolences, and they told me that they were praying for her and the family and everything, and just to let everybody know that they miss her, and if they could do anything or whatever, they wanted to know what they could do and so forth like that. But I just want to end this by saying, keep us in your prayers. The Bird family, the Banks family, all of the family, my extended family, the Whitfields, the cousins, the nieces, Wilmington, Delaware, sh Chicago, Georgia, f different places. And so just keep us in your prayers. And we're trusting and believing God that we all one day are going to have to go one way or another for us meeting the Lord, our Savior. And we want to make sure that we're ready. In the name of Jesus, you all pray for me. Thank you, Betty. How precious. To God be the glory. Yes. Yes. And now we will have a ministry and song. If I can help somebody. Dr. Harold Johnson. After hearing so much about Shirley, this, sounds, this song actually fits, and it's an honor to do it. If I can help Somebody, as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a prayer or a song, if I can show somebody that he's traveling but traveling wrong then my living shall not be in vain if I can do my 
my duty as a Christian, a Christian all. If I can bring back beauty to a world abroad, and if I can spread love's message that the master, the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living, my living shall not be in vain if I can help somebody as I pass along then my living it shall not be in vain then my living shall not be in vain then my living shall not be in I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not, then my living shall not, then my living shall not be in vain. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Well, Shirley's living definitely was not in vain. Amen. I think that is so awesome. I always say, all that we do on this side of the face of earth, that's what's going to make all the difference. That's what this is all about. Being the doers of what God's word says and just not the hearers only. I'm just going to take a, little, a few moments and share the word of God because that's where our help comes from, our strength and our peace. Yes. Are you Phoebe? Okay, come on. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you for this. You're welcome, precious. I've gotten a little bit older, and 
I'm praising the Lord that I'm here. I can start getting dressed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's still, I get a bit here late. Hey, <laughs> my friend Shirley, dearest best friend Shirley, you're talking about traveling. <laughs> we was buddies in traveling together. <sighs> my first time in traveling to Lake Tahoe, she helped me to, she traveled with me and helped me to get over traveling a mountain mm -hmm. and traveling and looking down, <laughs> going up and looking down. And I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> hey. And then the snow is on the mountain. That's, oh, how beautiful. Oh, Lord. Oh, you got to help me get through this, Lord. Then looking at the mountain. Oh, how beautiful. And Shirley just looking there, looking at me like, are you crazy? And I'm like, oh, the mountain is so beautiful. You can touch the mountain. Then I'm like, oh, Lord, you got to help me. But Shirley helped me get over my flight by, uh, fright. By the time I got to Lake Tahoe, I was over that fright because God helped me. And Shirley was my partner in getting through that fear of going through those mountains. Amen. So by the time we come back, but I had to do it before it got dark. So by the time I got back down that mountain, I was not afraid of driving through the mountain and looking down because there was a part of the mountain where I don't care who's behind me, they're going to have to go around because I am not going to pull over to the side for nobody. So I am not going to go to speed limit. I'm just going to go my limit. So, <laughs> so Shirley helped me with that. So we learned to love each other and to get over each other problem we might have. So Whatever my little issues was, she accepted me with my issues. I accepted her with her issues. So we just learned to love each other regardless of what little problems we might have. And God happened to work on us through them. Amen. So I just thank God for Shirley, my best friend. Hmm, I'm going to miss her. Amen. I already miss her. Yes. <sighs> We grew up together. We, we came to L.A. through some trying time, time we did not have enough food. We had to t learn to trust God because there was nothing in the pantry, but God put food on the table. So we came up through some trying, trying time. We knew each other's children. We babysat each other's children. <laughs> so we came up through some trying time, and God helped us to get to where we was able to have whatever we wanted to eat, whenever we wanted to eat it. Yes. So God saw us through some time. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to now, my children, <laughs> all grown up, educated, doing well, each one of them. Amen. I love you. You know I'm here for you. My little one over here, I love her so much. We get on the phone or texting word. We give each other the word. Amen. That's what we talk, the word. Amen. So I told her, I said, girl, I can't talk to you no more on the phone. I can't text you no more on the phone because I take too long to text. <laughs> I'm not one of those that text fast, so it takes me too long. So I cannot be giving you the word on the phone no more because it takes too long. She said, I am not going nowhere, and I am going to be texting you. You cannot get rid of me. In essence, that's what she said. I said, okay, all right, then. I guess I will. But it takes me too long. 
I'll be fat fingering things and whatever, and it takes her no time, but it takes me too long. So I said, okay, I guess I'm going to have to take the time to do the work with you because that's what we do on the phone. This young girl, she is so beautiful. I'm like, you are a beautiful young lady. She knows the word. I'd be telling her about somebody. She said, yeah, I know them. I'm like, she know who I know. Okay. So I just love that about her. And Attorney Williams over here, I just love him. Amen. So I love these two children. So they are my children too. So I Amen. just, my, 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 Family just get bigger and bigger Amen. because I've known of them. I helped to raise them. Yeah. But then it's like we got where we was not connected. So now through this trying time, our trying time of missing our sister, my sister, their mother, we're getting reconnected Amen. in a more spiritual way. Yes. So... Well, evil <laughs> thinking is evil because my sister is not, there's not evil where she uh, is concerned because she's in present with the Lord and she's having a ball. Oh, yes. She's having a ball. Yes, she is. So it's just the enemy think he's causing evil because we are missing her. Yes. So, but it's not even evil with that because, hmm. We love her, and we know she's in a better place. Praise the Lord. Well, we are aspiring to get to. Praise the Lord, yes. Praise God. So that's how we have to look at it. She's where we are aspiring to be. Yes. And even if we could have her back here, why would we want her back here in the mess that's going on <laughs> in this world? Yep, we would not want her to come back here. <laughs> uh -uh. No, 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 no. Amen. So, Children, just know that any time <laughs> you need me, I can't get there because you know I'm going to be late. <laughs> but if you need me by texting <laughs> or calling, <laughs> you got me, baby. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. I love y'all. Thank you, Phoebe. And thank you. To God be the glory. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. That's precious. That's what this is all about, moments to remember the times that we've had to experience each other's presence, just sharing, as they were saying, as it's already been said about the word of God, and to know that all of us who have received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, the word tells us that we will get to see her once again. And that's what makes all the difference. Yes, certainly we... You know, we are emotional and the word, you know, you can cry, it's okay. If you have to jump up and down like cheetah, it's okay. But remember, the word tells us over in Psalms 147 and 3 that the Lord heals the brokenhearted. And he binds up those wounds and can't nobody do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's why we have to continue through the word of God. Look to the hills from whence cometh our help. And that's where our help continues to come from. Now we're talking about eulogy. What is the eulogy? I'm glad you asked. I do have an answer. It means to speak well. A blessed speech or writing in praise of a person. A form of speech praising a person. Past. So all the things that you shared concerning Shirley. That's what the eulogy is all about. And taking that time to remember all the good times that you've had together. So you hold those memories dear in your heart. Come together in, in fellowship, break bread together. Just don't let this just be the last time. That's so important. Our God is a family-oriented God. He is so concerned about the family. You see, it's the enemy, Satan, the thief, as the word tells us over in John 10 and 10. He comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. God said, I've come that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. Oh, and when you seek to excel in the things of the word of God and take the time to be a doer of his word and not just the hearer only, it makes all the difference. 
We have an exciting life that he's blessed us with. He's given us so many blessings and promises through what his word tells us. Now, I'm going to share a few scriptures as I had started out over and to give us a better understanding of what transition takes place when Shirley in the physical breathed her last breath on this side of the face of earth. And as soon as she did, her spirit and her soul went to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. No more pain, no more sorrow. Oh, we can rejoice in that fact. And like I said, yes, don't get it twisted. We love her. We will miss her. I can't text her. I can't call her. But I can hold on to those times and memories that we've had the opportunity to experience. Over in 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 4, looking at verse number 13, the word tells us, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Hmm. For this we say by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. That is so interesting. Two, three times it talks about sleep. What does sleep imply? I'm glad you asked. I have the answer. Rest. So Shirley is resting from her labors. Hallelujah. That's right. And her works follow her. And she will receive of the rewards. Hallelujah. That's been promised to her. So the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. He says, therefore, what's it there for? Comfort one another with these words. That's why it's so important to have the word of God. Over in uh, 2 Corinthians, in chapter number 1, you know, where it tells us, okay, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all, A-L-L, -L, comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And I says, he's the only one that can fill that void on the inside. Yes, you know, it, 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 it hurts when you love someone and then all of a sudden now in the physical, I can't see him and have that personal contact with him. So it's only the Lord Jesus Christ that can fill that void in time. And we just continue to be in his presence and in Seek and excel through what his word says, because greater is he, the Lord Jesus Christ, on the inside of us than he that's in the world. Um, the word reminds us that we are made in the image and the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as it tells us over in Genesis 1 and 26, it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well, what is man? I'm glad you asked. According to John 4 and 24, it's a God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what happens when an individual receives Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior is the real you, the spirit you that's reborn from above or born anew. And that's what makes the difference. As I said, when Shirley breathed that last breath, then her spirit and her soul immediately ascended to be in the presence of the Lord. What's the soul of man? The soul of man contains your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. And so it's 
awesome that God has made us the way he has made us. It tells us over there in Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14, that we um, are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's so amazing. And I just want to remind you that with my good English, God don't do junk. <laughs> so he took very special time to form us. And as we take that time and get into the word of God and, and become molded and, and become in that word of God and to be the doers of his word and just not the hearers only, we can find life so fulfilling. And he says, with long life, Psalms 91 and 16, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's what we're talking about. And so surely live that long, good life. Oh, that's amazing. But right now, we who are alive and remain, <laughs> what are we going to do? How are we going to act? <laughs> so we said we miss Shirley, of course. We love her. And uh, ah, we want to make sure that we have done that that Shirley has already done to cause her to be in the presence of the Lord. So with that in mind, if you would be so kind, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you'll just be so kind to repeat after me, then we'll take care of this. Dear God, your word says, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. For with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Mm, thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. And I want to thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sins. I want to thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and anxieties. Your word also tells me, according to 1 Peter 2.24, that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. According to my faith, based on your word, I receive my healing now. In the name of Jesus. Let's give him some glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, that's what we're talking about today. Now, this is the assurance that we can be assured based on the word of God that we will see surely once again. Oh, I tell you, to us, we, we sit and we, we can imagine and think, but to her is no more imagination. Like I said, she's in his presence, mm, and she's having a wonderful, wonderful time. Oh, that's right, she's there with apostle. What can we say? <laughs> yes, and some of your other loved ones, yeah, she's already there. She just beat us to the punch. <laughs> but praise God, just to know that is so comforting and to give us that assurance that one day, unless Jesus returns first, we all gonna cross that bridge. But hallelujah, just to know God's peace. He says, peace I give to you, and not as the world gives, do I give to you. Over in John 14 and 27, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The word just told us that he is the God of all peace in all comfort, and to know that. So hold on to his peace, his peace that patheth all understanding, and it's all based on what the word of God says. So I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this time. Uh, family Stacy and William, I'm honored, and Betty, to have served you for this time. And I give the Father the praise, the glory, and the honor.
So if you'll just take this time and bow with me, we're gonna, this will be the conclusion of our services for today. But I wanna pray with you and then we'll have our usher to come and give you some instructions. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, once again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, we thank you that greater is he you that's on the inside of us than he that's in the world. And now as we're planning to go to our separate destinations, we thank you that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about us. We will have no accidents, nor will we cause any. But we thank you that our steps are ordered of you this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, Father, all the glory, and all the honor. We thank you. And all those who will agree will say, Amen. Amen. All right, sir. You may come and give us. Thank you, Dr. Jones. At this time, I'd like to thank the family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers for allowing the Crenshaw Christian Center Memorial Team to be part of this celebration of life for our dear sister in Christ, Ms. Shirley Boyd. Bird, sorry. Uh, at this time, I'm going to uh, read off the repast gathering. Um, which will be held at 1701 Scott Road Recreation Room in Burbank, California at 3 p.m. We have flyers in the lobby if you want to take pictures so you can know how to get there. Uh, they'll be in the lobby, in the foyer rather. Right now that concludes our service today and we'd like to thank you for coming and please drive safely and you are dismissed. Try the nails in my hand Laugh at me Where you stand Go ahead Say it isn't me The day will come That you will see Cause I'll rise again Ain't no power on earth can tie me down Yes, I'll rise again Death can't keep me in the ground Go ahead Mark my name, but my love for you is still the same. Go ahead, bury me, but very soon you all will see. Cause I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down Yes, I'll rise again Death can't keep me in the ground Can I'll come again Ain't no power on earth can hold me back Yes, I'll come again I come to take my people back I'll come to take my people back I'll come to take my people back